Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us on the Yours Mine Away podcast with me, Mark Howard. Today, I'm joined by a former teammate, George Long. Welcome, mate. I got a call on the morning of deadline day, so pack your bags, you're going to Scotland. I was buzzing. Great opportunity. Went and played every game from then to the end of the season. Yeah, you used to be football. Yeah, football. But- it's, it, it doesn't really work. I mean, some people it might, but yeah. you, I think you do need that balance. You need other interests, other hobbies. Yeah, I think it's so important, especially at that age, to, to have someone to keep your feet on the ground, keep you level-headed, because you're going to have rough patches in your first season. Like You're going to yeah. be making mistakes, not getting things right. And uh, yeah, Wardy was great for me in that first spell. You could live at home as well, that's a plus. I did, yeah. Travelling's not for me, though. Is like, it not? No, it was like on the border. I remember my first day driving, I got out of the car like a tin man. I thought, oh, it's not for me, this. Quite a contrast in uh, wages as well at that time oh, yeah bet. yeah especially in the 21s i'm coming from sheffield in league one you got like fully fledged prem yeah. players in you there. still got your nivea wash bag yeah, exactly yeah. <laughs> what a save from mark howard huge shout out to forged irish stout for being part of this podcast listen to that beauty an unbelievably smooth creamy stout by conor mcgregor the ufc legend not here to take part, but here to take over. Forged Irish Stout is on a mission to become the biggest Irish Stout. Conor McGregor has taken over the whiskey game. Now he's about to take over the Stout game. Me and my guests will be enjoying a few cans in the next few episodes. If you fancy checking it out too, make sure you hit the description below and find out where you can get Forged Irish Stout. Forged Irish Stout will be available in Asda nationwide come August. Let's get back to the podcast. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us on the Yours Mine Away podcast with me, Mark Howard. Today, I'm joined by a former teammate, George Long. Welcome, mate. Hi, mate. You all right? Thanks yeah, for having me. No, nah, thank you for coming on. Uh, Longy, uh, I've been trying to get you on for a while, actually. Yeah. Just uh, logistics, mate. It works out. But now I'm buzzing to have you on. We've got a few stories I'm sure we can share about our Sheffield yeah, United days. Definitely. As I said, you're at Millwall now and that, mate. Uh, played a lot of games last year and uh, out in uh, Bath. Uh, oh, mate, a season pro in the champ, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. Bart's had, uh, you know, I, as soon as I signed for Millwall, I'd, I'd heard he'd, he'd had an unbelievable stint there. So it was obviously a tall order getting in the team, yeah. but. Uh, I backed myself and it, it took a little bit of time, but, you know, forced my way in the team and had a decent season. So, you know, it was enjoyable and to uh, surpass 300 games as well. So that was nice. Yeah, nice, nice to get that milestone. Yeah, yeah. Brilliant, that, mate. A, a lot of my family are Millwall, mate, all Bermondsey and that. So, like, they would be buzzing that I've got you yeah. on as well. Nice. Proper Millwall. Millwall. Yeah. Uh, all right, let's go back to our time at Sheffield United before we start and talk about your career and that. So we had, uh, I think, three or four years together. Yeah. Like, uh, I remember coming in in the January and I think it was uh, Simo was playing and we was top of League One, weren't we? And yeah. Like, I remember you you trained with us every day under goalie coach was Paul Crichton. Crichton, yeah. Mate, it just used to leather balls from about 20 half yards. Half all the all the time, wasn't it? Yeah, every session we did, it was like from 25 yards, weren't yeah. it? Yeah, I don't know whether that's because Simo wanted it or... Or Christ, like smashing balls. But. Mate, Simo was some ca- Steve Simonson, by the way, some character, by the way. His yeah. son actually listens to this, so I'm going to tell a couple of Simo stories just for him alone. Right, fair play. Yeah, I had to I room with Simo for like the first couple of years when I was with the first team, so it was quite an interesting uh, interesting time for me. Oh, mate, I, I think it was one of my first days. We did uh, volleys to warm up, and uh, obviously... I, Danny Wilson had signed me and he had said to me, Mark, like, you're not going to play. Simo's, we're top of League One. Simo's here. We've got young George Long. We think he's going to be brilliant, but we just want to make sure for the running that we're covered. It's like, yeah, yeah sound. That's class. So like, thanks for being honest with me. Mate, one of my first days training with Simo, mate, I volleyed the ball clean off his grid and he walked in. Do you remember? I do remember him. It's uh, We spoke about it before, yeah, but he... Uh... He wasn't happy, was he? No. Nah. Whatever, I don't know. Mate, did do you know mi- what Did it he was? miss the catch or just slapped no, him straight up? No, do you know what it was? It was, uh, obviously, it was, I think it was my first week, so like a little bit nervous as well. Yeah. You know, like you do uh, two lads volleying the ball at like six yards out, so yeah. like you'd move across the goal, take a volley, move across the yeah. goal, take a volley. Well, then the next set was the crossover one, so you'd do the diag. Okay, and they serve And across. then they serve on the... Yeah, yeah. yeah, but I served the straight one. Okay, and he's not looking. He's not looking, <laughs> so he's. Lo- I think he was looking at you on yeah, the yeah. diag, and he's taken one <laughs> straight to the dish. And I just remember him just going, nah, and just walking in. Yeah. I was like, oh my God, has he actually gone in? He actually went in. Yeah, that's... Uh... Yeah, fair play to him. Yeah. He, he could do that at the time, couldn't he? Yeah, I think, he, I think he, he was back home in his motor on the on the way home. Yeah, his Volkswagen, mate. Yeah. Remember that banger that he Classic. 
driving back and fr- uh, to and from Liverpool every day. Yeah. My, my other favourite story about Simo, and I swear this is true, he used to have a spare hat in his pocket when it when he trained because of his hair weave he had his hair done so he had a hair transplant and it couldn't get too wet so that one day I remember him training and it was bucketing it down at Shirecliff the training ground and halfway through the training session he's whipped off his hat thrown it on the floor and got another hat out of his pocket a dry one and honestly I stood there for about five minutes going did that happen did that happen Yeah. and I still to this day I'm like I don't know if I've convinced myself that story's real or if it happened. It but. probably did. I think he was quite particular about his hair when he said yeah. it. Could, yeah, it probably happened. That yeah, way. mate. Uh, obviously, like we said, we we worked together. Uh, I want to talk about uh, the season after uh, when I started the season uh, yeah. and you was oh, proverbial number two, but yeah. you was behind me. And uh, I remember we started the season. I think we were unbeaten in twelve, and I was just like, oh, to be fair. I'd, we'd set, I'd settled into living in Sheffield and loved it as a place and that. And then uh, I ruptured my fire at Leighton Orient away. I remember it, yeah. yeah. I remember it clearly. Yeah. I think you probably remember The lads it. were probably giving me a nudge. I think, are you going to warm up longer? I was yeah. like, yeah, better get out there. Yeah. So I come straight on and you were... I it was 11 minutes into the game at yeah. Leighton Orient away. I fully ruptured my fire taking a goal kick and then Tony McMahon tried to pass me the ball back. What, I can't, what do you do? Oh, I think I was laying on the floor, mate. I think it probably just <laughs> hit me on the head. <laughs> no, actually, yeah. I remember hopping around and kicked it out with my left foot, like okay. on one leg, yeah. like just in agony. Yeah. And I remember you coming on and like, I think, I think, do we win that day as well? I think it was might it, have been 1-0. Yeah, I think we won 1-0. One one yeah. uh, obviously, everyone was singing your praises. I was in the physio yeah. room in absolute agony. And that season, mate, like honestly, I, for such a, a young pup, you went yeah. from strength to strength. I voted your player of the season. I think Harry Maguire won it in the end. Yeah. But you know, it was amazing to see that like, you just grew into yourself. Yeah, it was, uh, I think you don't have much time to think as a youngster. You're just like rolling with it. Like you get subbed on, you're not expecting it. And then you're just in the game and you're getting on with it. Uh, and I think, you know, we kept like between the two of us, we kept loads of clean sheets that year. It might yeah. have been a club record. I think it was 21 in all comps. Really? I yeah, think- something like that. So... I think as a combined effort. Not was, that I count, mate. I kept yeah. seven of them, so. Well, there you go. <laughs> combined effort. <laughs> yeah. But uh, like, I think I was 18 at the time, so yeah. you don't know any different. You're just, no. you're just playing first team football at your boyhood club and yeah. like, you're, just, you're just rolling with it. You're not thinking too much about it. And um, You had a yeah. really good goalie coach, obviously in Darren Ward, who's been a guest on here. But yeah. like Wardy loved you, didn't he? Like yeah. he proper looked after yeah, you. Yeah, I think it's so important, especially at that age, to, to have someone to keep your feet on the ground, keep you level-headed and just sort of coach you through because you're going to have rough patches in your first season. Like you're going to yeah. be making mistakes at times and not getting things right. And uh, yeah, Wardy was great for me in that first spell, you know, coming into the team because, you know, it's so important to, to get that ground in and especially playing at such an early age, it was uh, looking back, it's, you know, I'm quite proud of that achievement. No, it was amazing. Uh, even uh, I remember the, the club signed Danny Coyne as well to make yeah. sure, but you just kept going, mate, and like you kept your place and you were flying. Yeah, yeah I, I think maybe close to 40 games up here, yeah. 35, 40 games. Yeah, yeah. So 18, you know, I was I was delighted with that. And you, you probably don't realise at the time what what a good achievement it is. Yeah, ma- a massive impact, obviously, going forward. Like you're saying, you've, you've amassed over 300 games already. Yeah. What age are you now? Uh, 29. Yes, like incredible achievement. Yeah. And that like comes from like, mate, you've got so many games in when you're young. It's, exactly. It's yeah. class. And everywhere you've gone, the first year you've had to like bed in or something. Yeah. And then you've just gone and played, got more games and yeah. more games. And Yeah, it's uh, it, it happens, doesn't it? Like you move on from places then... You know, uh, like signing for Hull, uh, Marshy was there. He was he had a great season. Then I played the year after, and obviously coming to Millwall, Bart's playing. Then I get in the the season after. So it's just you know, it's just I think it's just backing yourself to to impress and then waiting for the opportunity. Yeah, no, we'll talk about that in a bit, right? I'm going to kick this off with our quick fire questions, right? Yeah. Uh, nice and easy. Catch or parry? Catch. Favorite kit color? I've always liked yellow. Yellow, yeah. yeah. You're a luminous yellow. Yeah, I yeah. quite like it. Nah, I'm green. Uh, play out from the back or kick it long? Kick it long. Kick it long, <laughs> yes. Depends what manager, by the way. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. A- any play it out from the back managers listening or watching? We can do both. Yeah, quite, we can. Like, quite like a side volley, playing yeah. it long in behind. Yeah, yeah. me too, man. You know how far I kick a ball yeah. anyway. I still love booting it. Yeah. Uh, your favourite ever goalkeeper? I've got a couple, so really Decent. young. I know you're going to say Joe Hart. <laughs> Second, yeah. So Paddy Kenny initially. Yeah. I grew up a Sheffield United fan, so I was watching Paddy Kenny week in, week out, and Joe Hart. Yeah. So, you know, a lot of the things 
uh, when I was younger, I would model on Joe Hall, like the spread save and stuff. Yeah, you still do your gym still, sessions and that. Yeah, like I still him. smash the gym, yeah. So I <laughs> think, yeah, Joe sick. Hart. <laughs> uh, right, best stadium you've ever played at? I'd say Stadium Old Trafford and but atmosphere Ibrox. Nice, yeah. yeah. Mate, Scotland's special, isn't it? It was incredible. Like the, the noise walking out, it was a playoff game for Motherwell. The noise was insane. Like, never heard anything that like it. That was to keep you in the league. I, mean, I watched was, that game. Yeah. 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 Did they do the bouncy? Uh, you know, like the Poznan thing where they all. If I they, can't remember. Yeah. Man. Mate, I, Ibrox, if they score, they do the bouncy bounce. Oh, mate, it just goes yeah. off. Yeah, we, we won 3 1, though. So yeah. it was incredible. Yeah. I remember what. I mean, some game that. Yeah. Uh, match of the day or Sky Sports News? Match of the day. Yeah. You've, you've watched this show. Uh, how tall are you, Longy? Six foot four. Oh, you've grown. <laughs> <laughs> you've added tax. I'm mean, joking. <laughs> he is six foot four. Uh, who's the best goalie in the world right now? Good question. It's a toss up uh, between, I'd go, Edison or Allison. Yeah? Yeah. It's two Brazilian. No yeah. Courtois in there, no? Yeah, probably throw Because we watch the Prem every, every week. <laughs> Yeah, I think you, you. I think sway towards them too. Yeah, nah, I'm with you. The two Brazilians, mate. Right, head tennis or goalie wars? Both. Yeah, mate. We don't get to do goalie wars enough. Yeah. Like head tennis is like, yeah, you can do that on a second day recovery. Yeah, when you see the net out in the morning, yeah, though, you're buzzing, it's are you? Proper, mate. It's yeah. good, isn't it? But when the goals come out for goalie wars, it's like it just doesn't happen enough. No, it's so competitive. Right, and then last one: save a penalty in the last minute or score a goal in the last I'd minute. I'd love to score. Me too, mate. I'd love it. Mate, that, that you can't sum up what that would mean yeah, to a goalie. Be incredible. Yeah, I've been up for a few corners, and usually it's nowhere near me. Yeah, or you foul someone. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because be... we've got no idea <laughs> yeah. about climbing on bats. Guaranteed and stuff. booking, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Right, let's crack on then. Right, so why goalkeeping, Longy? Um, it seems like a similar story for everyone, but like my older brother I used to go and watch him play, and uh, I then joined in. He was two years older than me. I joined in outfield, but I was just hacking people down. So that, I think the coach just said, Look, just go in goal. And I was quite a big lad and then yeah. stuck with it ever since. Uh, I'll be like eight, eight or nine years old. The easiest way of like, summing it up is when you've got an older brother in the back garden, you have yeah. no choice. Yeah, you're getting balls smashed at your Yeah, own. And you're just taking it and you're like, oh, well, it's just what it is. Yeah. So yeah, I think from, from being very young, I'd, I'd play outfield for school, but in, uh, in goal since yeah, eight or nine. Do you, do you have an earliest memory of the first time you played in goal? Probably I had a Sunday league team in Sheffield called Abbey Lane. So probably playing for them, I'd say. Yeah. 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 Uh, all right. And then obviously you're saying you did play outfield. Did you did you continue to play outfield while you was a goalie? Uh, for school, yeah. yeah. And I think I once played outfield for the under-15s, Sheffield United Academy. No way. Yeah, but I pulled my hammy after 10 minutes. <laughs> Disaster. <laughs> yeah, so I didn't, I didn't get to show what I could do, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah, right. So obviously you signed for Sheffield United Academy. Uh, what age was you when you actually signed for the academy? Uh, under-9s, end of the yeah. under-9s season. So you yeah. was there for a... a Really long time. Yeah, nine till twenty-three. It's I left. Good going, that yeah, mate. It's a long time, yeah. Uh, and at that time, uh, we can chuck some other names about, but Sheffield United had a really good system of bringing players yeah. through, didn't they? Carl yeah, Walker, loads, Carl yeah. Norton, uh, Nick Montgomery, another one. Yeah. Uh, Jags. Ma Jags, yeah. Phil yeah. Jagielka, Christ, Harry, uh, Harry Maguire. Like yeah. there, there's loads. There is a, a long, endless list. Yeah. Did you ever look at that and go, to be fair, this is the right pathway? Or because you're a Sheffield United fan, did you just go, I just want to be at Sheffield United? I think so, yeah. You probably don't know any different as a kid, but I think, yeah, the the academy's done really well. There's so many people like Harry, uh, Carl Walker, come out and played for England. Um, and obviously our youth team as well was quite successful, got into the Youth Cup final and the... There's probably four or five. You, Callum McFadden still yeah. uh, wrecks them, isn't he? Yeah, my teammate. Yeah. yeah so uh, yeah, there's so many to come out and lads in the year, few years below. Dom Calvert Lewin, uh, obviously Rammers. Yep. There's there's so many to name. I probably forgot loads as well. But. That Man United team that did beat you in the Youth Cup final had yeah. some special players in it too, it didn't the they? Same on it. Yeah. What they have Pogba and Lingard in midfield. And it's not too bad, is it? Yeah, it's all right. Ravel Morrison. <laughs> yeah, it's not that bad, is yeah. it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Obviously. Uh, the pressures of coming through an academy like Sheffield United that has produced players, did you ever feel the pressure or was it just a natural progression that you just would tick off every year and just see yeah. how you're getting on? I think initially I was just rolling with it, just playing playing games, really enjoying it, but you don't realise it's a tough place to learn your trade. You've yep. obviously got the cop behind you. It's, it can be unforgiving at times. Yep. So I think as well, there's not really an off switch as well. When you're from the city, you live in the city and all your friends and family are Sheffield United With fans. a huge rivalry as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So you'd sort of, you can't sort of leave the football 
after the game is yeah. is more difficult. Yeah, I found it tough at times living. It, so I, I I lived out in Rotherham, but when I yeah. came into Sheffield and. I didn't realise at the time when I first signed it's how tough it is when you're not winning. Yeah. And like obviously you talk to other lads when you're playing, you're like, but it's coming from the town and yeah. all your friends being United fans and your family being United fans, yeah. that's a whole nother like yeah. aspect of it. Yeah, there is there's probably a lot of added pressure being, you know, from the city and growing up a fan of the club, so yeah, I think there's definitely added pressure to that. Yeah. Uh, so you made your progression really quickly anyway through Sheffield United. And uh, obviously, yeah. like I said, you trained with us at 17, 18 years old. You got thrust in, mate. Did you notice like the, the difference in standards as you stepped up? Or was it just something you've yeah. always, you, you're quite, you like to be quite cool anyway and like quite calm. Like you, I've never seen you flustered. Yeah. So like, I can't imagine you ever being any other way than the way you are right now. Yeah, I, th I think so. I, I, distinctly remember my first ever session with the first team and I was like oh my god this tempo is insane yeah like, I couldn't believe it it was I remember it was on the indoor astro because it was snowing and they needed a keeper something had happened to one of the other lads and uh yeah I just couldn't believe the tempo but I was still like making saves and just flying about because you're so raw at yeah. the time but yeah it was it was like you get thrust in you deal with it well and then you sort of it becomes easy with time yeah because yeah. You've always been quite physically big anyway. Like yeah. you're saying, you love throwing weights about. But like I, I, I compare it to like Aaron Ramsdale. When he came in, he was a bag of bones, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, he was, yeah. So like when you had like you coming through, like physically you was already ready to cope. Where like when like Rambo came in, yeah. he was like, it's just knobbly knees, isn't it? Yeah, exactly, yeah. Ram I think his, his progression from 16 to 18 was huge. Yeah. I remember seeing like the transformation and watching him in a youth game, I was like... Yeah, he's, he's just got serious potential. Yeah, right. Uh, one other thing, I don't know if your mum will be pleased me bringing up, <laughs> but, but her come into the games Oh uh, yeah, dressed as Santa Claus. I remember that one, yeah. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> I didn't know about it either. I've turned up and the lads have gone, Long, is that your mum behind the goal there? I remember, I remember taking Mrs. a goal Claus. kick. Yeah, and oh, Mrs. Long, number one on the back. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man, it's like forever in my memory. I remember warming up or taking a goal kick in a game and turn around and just seeing your mum dressed yeah. as... Full Santa outfit. Full Santa outfit, mate. Yeah. So. And I remember coming in over, uh, coming over and telling you, he's like, nah. <laughs> just, like, like, again, like you always see one phase. Yeah. I was like, tried to fluster you. He's like, like, you just didn't move. You're just like, nah, can't, can't handle that. <laughs> <laughs> I think as a youngster, you, you're a lot more, uh, you know, phased by that sort of thing. But now it'd, it'd be quite funny. But, you know, when you're 18, 19, your mum's behind the goal in a Santa outfit. It's not ideal, is it? <laughs> <laughs> it's a hell of a sentence, isn't yeah. it? What a sentence that is. Uh, right, and finally on Sheffield United, obviously, I love my time there. I think it's a class club. I still think that, like, it's got so much more to give. But yeah. the pressure of, like you said, the cop and the stadium, like, we were getting, like, 23 to 26,000 in yeah. League One. Like, yeah. The support's just mental, isn't it? Yeah, it's, uh, it's a brilliant club to play for, especially when things are going in the right direction. Like yeah. the, the fans, the noise, and I think... For an away team as well, like you, you know, it's a point's a good, uh, you know, a good point when you go to Bramall Lane. Yeah. Um, so that's that's the thing that we struggled with in our, like my time there when I was playing was that every team thought we were the biggest scalp yeah. because at that time we was the biggest team in the yeah, league. league, and that one, was yeah. hard to like adjust to some games. That yeah. You you come to Bramall Lane and like they would just set up shop and try yeah. and play for a nil-nil and it frustrated the life out of us yeah. at times, didn't it? I think it? everyone raised their game, didn't they? Because yeah. it was probably the biggest away game uh, of the season for everyone. Yeah. So yeah, it's, uh, it, it was difficult, but you know, ultimately I think they, you know, we got promoted out of the league. So Yeah, uh, yeah you was there the, the first year they got out of League One, weren't you? Yeah. So I'd left the year before Yeah. and I signed for Bolton and we both got promoted that year. Yeah. I remember, so, yeah, I remember that. Season. It was like bittersweet for me. I was like, oh, I wish I had experienced it with Sheffield United, but I was yeah. lucky enough to experience it with Bolton anyway. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So like, obviously, that must have been an amazing time for you to yeah. be a Sheffield United fan. Yeah, it was at the club. Yeah, it was a bit of both really because I didn't play much at all that season because they uh, Chris Wilder signed Simon Moore and he played the majority of the season. I played the first few games, so obviously it's, it was a difficult one as a player yep, um, and frustrating. So I obviously wanted to leave, go and play football elsewhere. Yeah. And I ended up doing that the next season at Wimbledon. Yep. Um, but yeah, you know, for the club to then get promoted was, you know, it's great to be a part of as well. Yeah. I bet those celebrations were pretty epic. Yeah. As well. It was a good time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Steamboats bash class, mate. Right. Let's do goalie or no goalie quiz. Yeah. You know what this is, don't okay. you? Okay. 
Yeah. Right. So I've got uh, one point for each answer and uh, it's five international goalkeepers that have played recently. Yeah. All starters, by the way. And uh, five random names that I've plucked from around the world. Yeah. Yeah. You know the script? I'm going to try and do the score myself, by the way. My little helper. Right. Number one. Ready? Let's do it. Robert McCall. Goalie. Goalie? Nope. No goalie. That is Denzel Washington's character in The Equalizer. Yeah, he could be good in goal, though, couldn't he? Yeah, he could be good in <laughs> Mate, I wouldn't fancy taking him on. Uh, right, number two. Henry Hedison. No goalie. No. Nah. Sure? That's a goalie, isn't it? No, nah, it's not a goalie, is mate. It not? It's not a goalie. That is the founder of Henderson's Relish. Nice, straight out of Sheffield. Yeah, like proper, it. proper Sheffield yeah. Brown, that. I thought I had to get one in yeah, for you. Yeah, I like it. I was going to chuck in a couple of cricketers, and I was like, wow, I'll just go with the Henderson's Relish. <laughs> anyway, can you tell people what this is, by the way? It's only it's, in Sheffield, by the way. It's tough to describe, isn't it? It's like, I suppose like Liam Perrins. Yeah, it's like Liam eyes. Perrins. But no have... one likes to say Worcestershire sauce. No, nah, live on in air. In Sheffield, it's everywhere. <laughs> yeah. uh, Henderson's Relish. You'd have it on like your, your pie. Chips. Pie and chips, yeah. yeah. And probably every household's got some. Yeah, mate, but you can't get anywhere else. No, it's just in Sheffield, yeah. Do you actually have a bottle down in London with you? Uh, You're not a real chef. Yeah, I probably do, you know. Yeah, yeah you yeah, better I have. will do, yeah. yeah. <laughs> probably gathering dust, but yeah. yeah. Fair enough. Right, number three. Ogyen Kansaric. Goalie. He is a goalie, mate. I'm not repeating that name. Uh, Armenia and Alesh Kurt, goalkeeper. Mate, I br- butchered that name. There he is. Is that a silent J? <laughs> Who put that J in there? there? Right, two. Fine, now. You're, you're on a roll now. Number four, Morgan Wallen. No goalie. He's not a goalkeeper, mate. He is one of the top country singers in the world right now. He is massive in America. Like, like you've never seen. Yeah. We went out, uh, we played uh, in pre-season, we played... Uh, LA Galaxy and that night he was playing nice. in LA and no one came to the football match. Really? Everyone yeah. was there? It, we was expecting like 18,000 at our game and I think we end up with about eight because right. they all went down the road. Fair play. Yeah, it was massive. Right, number five, Cristobal Campos. Goalie. He is a goalie, mate. He's Chile and Universidad de Chile. Yeah, nice pronunciation. No, I'm happy Very with that good. One. Yep, I'm happy with that one. You're on three at yeah, three out of five. No, you're on four out of five, aren't you? It's a good start. Yeah, fine. Right, number six. Georgios Petrizikas. Goalie. He is not a goalie, mate. He is a celebrity Greek chef. But it sounds such a goalie. It sounds name. like a goalie. Doesn't yeah, it? I've killed you there. I've, I've, that was a stitch up one. Right, number seven. Kazuki Azoka. Asaka, sorry. I'm going to go goalie. He is a goalie, mate. Yeah. Asaka. Japan and Sam Fresh Hiroshima goalkeeper. Nice. Mate, flying now. Five out of yeah, five out of seven you're on. You got two wrong. Right, number eight, Oliver Sale. No goalie. It doesn't sound like a goalie, but it he is, is mate. He is a goalie, yeah. He is Perth Glory and New Zealand goalkeeper. Oliver Sale. Didn't sound like a goalie at no. all, did it? No, I've done you as well there. I love getting people. That's part of the game, isn't it? Right, number nine. Jing Wu Men. Goalie. Bruce Lee is not a goalie. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Jing Wu Men. Yeah, it's Bruce Lee, mate. What a what a geezer he was. Ah, yeah. It's one of my favourite films, that by the way. What a geezer. Fair right. Play. Number ten. <clears throat> oh wow, how do you pronounce this one? Bartlemage Dragowski. I'm going to have to finish with a goalie. Yeah, he's goalie, yeah. mate. Yeah, I'm not repeating that name either. <laughs> Poland and Spezia, goalkeeper. Six out of ten, mate. That's not Dr- bad. Dragowski. Yeah, Dragowski's all right. Oh, Try and say that first on, name. The beard on him. Yeah, he's hefty beard, that. Bartlemej. Nice, you. You could do my job. Yeah. <laughs> Can I just get you in? <laughs> Pronunciations. Six out of ten, mate. You happy yeah, with that? Yeah, I'll take that, yeah. Yeah. All right, uh, let's talk about loans then, right? Yeah. Let's go back to football. Uh, you had some very successful loan moves uh, to Oxford, Wimbledon and Motherwell, obviously all from Sheffield United. Yeah. Uh, what's it like when you're a young lad going out on loan? Um, let's, go, bit... let's run through them one by yeah. one as well. Go on. So I think my first one was Oxford. So I probably went for two or three months there, played 10 or so games. Uh, so that was my first one. It's... 
you know, first time being away from home and... First time at a new club. Exactly, yeah, first time at a new club, so it's exciting, but also a bit nerve-wracking at times when you're settling in and cooking for yourself and finding your feet, that sort of thing. Singing in a new dressing room. Yeah. That's the worst, that. isn't it? Yeah, I've got my song for every team I move to, so <laughs> it's well rehearsed. It's the same song, yeah. just rinse and repeat, Arctic mate. Monkeys tune, yeah. Yeah, nice. Um, and then the same season, I went to Motherwell on deadline day. Yep. So, um, yeah, I loved it up there. Got a phone call on deadline day. I wasn't expecting to go anywhere. I was trying to go somewhere. Nothing had come. Yellow ticker tape, George Lyon. Exactly, Class. yeah. I'd made it. <laughs> Class. Uh, yeah, so I got a, got a call on the morning of deadline day. So, pack your bags, you're going to Scotland. I was buzzing. I thought, uh, you know, great opportunity. Went and played every game from then to the end of the season. And uh, as I mentioned before, we finished second bottom, which puts you in a, a playoff with second top in the league below, which was... A bizarre concept when I heard about it first time anyway. <laughs> the split in the league yeah, oh, the don't make sense. Well, but then yeah. even that just yeah. makes it tops it off. I saw the fixtures, I thought they ended in April, and then I got told about <laughs> told about the split. Um so yeah, we played Rangers home and away, beat them three one at Ibrox and three nil uh at Motherwell. Yeah. So it was an unbelievable finish to the season. Yeah, just incredible every, for the club. Yeah, everyone well. thought we were gonna get beat. You know, it's Rangers, they're coming back up and they're gonna roll us over. Yeah. So to beat them six one in aggregate. Yeah, you ruined the, the Rangers party because they'd had so, a couple yeah. of promotions in yeah, successful they, seasons. Yeah, they were successful. ready to come back to the top flight, weren't they? Yeah. So yeah. To well, you know, it's rounded off a great loan. Beat, beating Rangers at any point at Ibrox is tough. Yeah. Especially that atmosphere. Yeah. Hostile, wasn't it? Really hostile. So loud as well because, you know, walking out of the tunnel, is it was just electric. Couldn't hear anything apart from the noise. In the old wooden clad dressing room. Yeah, room's. it's like historic, It isn't is it? special, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it really is, yeah. Yeah. So. I, I loved playing there. I thought it was an unbelievable <clears throat> place to go and play. Yeah. I, think, I think the Scottish football in general for especially for under 25s is an incredible place to yeah, learn your trade definitely for any young lad or anyone to be fair going and getting games there and playing you've got the huge game celtic rangers yeah um you know you're not going to experience that anywhere else are you no exactly that and then obviously the, uh, you had a loan move to wimbledon as well yeah, yeah i loved that it was probably you know one of the most enjoyable seasons uh, in my career uh, working with Bezo, the goalie coach i'm sure everyone sings his praises Bezo's mate. a legend he's so good like he's like as a character he's unbelievable but as a goalie coach incredible as yeah. well like his sessions are different every day and like he brings the energy like yeah. he's such a character around the place and he definitely got the best out of me uh had a really good year there uh and we stayed up with a couple of games to go was up, we're always like at Wimbledon sort of up against it in yeah. terms of budget and everything like that but as a season I absolutely loved it down there yeah it's a class place to live as well, isn't it? Oh, unreal, yeah. yeah. I, was, I was living in uh, Walton on Thames. Yeah, so nice. That was really nice. Yeah. yeah, I've got a lot of family there as well. God, yeah. I sound like a, I'm a traveller. Uh, <laughs> no, yeah, obviously uh, your loan moves. I, I, I definitely feel like you. Every time you came back from a loan move, you came back slightly different. Like, like you'd learnt the game a bit more, and yeah. like it just it toughens you to like go. No, this is the type of goalkeeper that I am. Yeah. I, I remember seeing it after Oxford, uh, and I think it was after the Motherwell one when you came back that season. I think that was just before my last season. I think it was, and I just remember you coming back and you was like, uh, like I said before, you're a physical specimen anyway. But like mentally, you had changed. Yeah. You'd not. You weren't a kid anymore. You turned yeah. into an adult, and you yeah. knew that like winning mattered and how tough it was to go and get games. Yeah, no, it's it's so important for a young lad. Obviously, I'd got straight into Sheffield United's first team as a, as a youngster, but then gone on loan after, which is sort of yeah. like the reverse of how it usually happens, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, going to other clubs, seeing different environments, different teams, styles of play and everything like that, it's so good for development. So you can like you can mix it up, you can play out the back if you need to, or shell it long when, you know, when, when, you, needed, yeah. when it's needed. And you yeah. can sing Arctic Monkeys whenever you need exactly, to. Exactly, well, yeah. yeah. Right, so from that, from that, you went, obviously, your, your loan move from, from Wimbledon, but you went back to Sheffield United, obviously. I think you then signed for Hull, didn't you? Yeah, so off the back of the Wimbledon loan, signed, uh, yeah, signed for Hull, did three years there. Yeah. So, yeah. It was... you, you obviously enjoyed your time. Could live at home as well, that's a plus. I did, yeah. Travelling's not for me, though. Is like, it not? No, nah, it was like on the border. It was like an hour 20 from my house. Yeah. And like a lot of people think, oh, it's doable. But I remember my first day driving, I got out of the car like a tin man. I thought, it's not for me, this. Yeah. So I ended up renting a flat nearby and sort of doing a little bit of both. So that helped me out, yeah. Yeah, see, like the travelling aspect, I don't think a lot of people actually appreciate, especially like the, some of our listeners, is like when you get kids, you have no choice. But when you're young, yeah. you want to be close to the training ground. Yeah. You don't, one, you like your sleep still, <clears> but also you want to spend as much time at the training ground as possible. Yeah. And if you're travelling an hour and 20, you're not going to turn up physically your best. No. you're tired already, aren't yeah. you? Yeah, and then... 
you're doing prehab just to get going. Yeah. You like where you should be turning up ready to go. Yeah. And like these sort of things are a big factor in every footballer's career. It's like contracts are only one or two years and you, you can't afford to move house constantly. No. So like you've got to factor in like each player's special like requirements almost. Yeah, exactly. I think it's obviously it's different now. I've got a son. Uh, so if he was settled in school or yeah. nursery, things like that, that's a big consideration. But at the time, it's just me uh, and my girlfriend. So it's, you know, I thought I'm not getting the most out of myself. I'm just slogging up and down the motorway every day in the car. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, made the decision, rented a flat and got a lot more sleep yeah that's, that's the main thing but <laughs> it then was, yeah. it's nice because at the weekends you could have your release and go back to your home city yeah so like you're not far like you would do that you go and see family and stuff yeah. like that. that's such an important release away from football is that you've still got that time yeah to go and chill out and not be like so involved in that place yeah exactly yeah it's uh it is good to have that separation from football especially you know, good game, bad game. It's you've you've got to try and switch off as well as best as you can on yeah. on the Sunday, haven't you? Yeah, uh, and not be you know chewing things over and bumping into fans wherever you go. It's, you just want to have a nice coffee somewhere. Even the players, sometimes you just want to get away from your own teammates because yeah. you, you work that closely together and you you're involved in such a tight knit environment. Yeah, like you, you you're getting showered with them every day. You're eating lunch with them every day. Yeah. You're, you're training with them for two three hours. You're in the gym with them. Yeah. When it's you a lot get of time, away, isn't it? it's a lot of time, and then you, on a Friday, you spend from nine a.m. till twelve o'clock at night on away games because yeah. you're you're on a coach with them, you're training with them, you're in a hotel eating dinner, you're sleep, sleeping in the same room as another one. Yeah. People don't realize that mentally, you need to just get away and like your your family, especially like, and having children is such a great release because it just refocuses what you want to do during the next week. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you, I think you, I've learned that as well when you. When I got a bit older, just having that switch off, you can't be like football, football, football all the time. Just drive you mad. Yeah, you used to be football, yeah, football, football. But just, it, it doesn't really work. I mean, some people it might, but yeah. you, I think you do need that balance. You need other interests, other hobbies. Yeah. And, you know, you need to switch off. And I think that makes you a better person and a better player yeah. off the back of that. Uh, every uh, Obviously, we're going to lead on to a bit of middle wall, but like we said before, right, you've especially like... I've seen like you play your best football when you've had a bit of time to bed into a club and then you then just go and play a huge run of games. Yeah. Do you find that like moving clubs, moving house is difficult and then it takes that bit of time or do you think it's just you need that bit of patience from a manager to go, right, chuck me in, give me that chance? Yeah, um, it's probably a little bit of everything. I think like the whole move and Millwall, I've moved to a club as number two at the time yep. and sort of backed myself to work my way into the team. Uh, so I've sort of known the score as soon as I've come in. Yep. Um, and, you know, uh, I've accepted those roles initially, but knowing, you know, I've got the quality to work my way into the team and do well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you're right. Moving house is it's unsettling. You're moving your whole life down somewhere completely different. And yeah, there's no doubt it takes time to settle in. You're trying to make new friends and your partner's trying to make new friends in the area. It's a lot harder for them as well because, you know, we've got the lads at football and you go play golf on the day off. But, you know, yeah. uh, it's harder for you for your wife or partner to to do that and meet new people yeah uh one of the that's a great point as well that you make about like the competition for places like only one of us can play as a goalkeeper yeah so at first you you either have to put up and shut up or you just have to get your head down and work hard and try yeah. and fight for your place and it's often the, the 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 case that you're fighting and you think that you're better than the other one or even if you're not as good you try and work harder than them and you yeah. try and earn your right to play and it's difficult sometimes because you don't often get that opportunity or that backing from a manager to say, right, yeah, you're coming, you're going to play. Yeah, I think it is because a lot of the time you sort of you feel like you're doing all you can, but that opportunity doesn't come or straight away. So it's sort of like delayed gratification of, you know, I'm doing everything right now and it might come uh, six months down the line or a year down the yeah. line. And it, is it are you, you know, mentally strong enough to be consistent every day and wait for that opportunity yeah. it is you do see it with players where they just can it off don't you yeah exactly so. I've, I've had it my whole career i'm similar to you that like i'm quite happy to move clubs and go right i'm ready for the fight and i'll, yeah. I'll, I'll earn my, my way into the team but uh, on the other hand sometimes when you get the vote of confidence from your manager there's no better feeling yeah. that like if you if you're at a club or a new manager comes in and he just gives you that like little pat yeah, on the back and goes away, yeah. you're my goalie and you're yeah. like oh my god i can play with freedom yeah and you actually like get to express yourself a bit more you get to play in goal how you want to play in goal yeah i think you get the best out of people when yeah. you do that don't you a hundred percent yeah you don't yeah. want to be as especially as a keeper thinking or oh, one one, one thing mistake. goes wrong you're out the door yeah that's i don't think anyone wants that as a football player so yeah I right. think 
Let's do some geeky goalie talk then, right? Let's talk gloves <coughs> first, right? Yeah. This is Matt Smith, and this is the glove review on the Yours Mine Away podcast. Can you tell us about the gloves you're currently in? Uh, I've, I've never seen you wear cells until recently. I know, yeah. I swapped, uh, I think it's probably last season. Started yeah. wearing cells. Um, yeah, they're class, to be fair. They're, well, these are the new ones. I'll get these out. They've still got the wrapping on. Uh, so this is a job for peeling. Oh, just, my God. What do you think? Ten-minute job? Nah, more. Because yeah. <laughs> they all get caught in the corners, yeah. don't they? But, yeah. I'm, I'm proper fussy with peeling the oh, plastic yeah. off. I have to get the lot off. All of it. Have you? I've got like a set of tweezers in my wash bag. Right. Yeah, I'll I'm take not that, Yeah, I'm not that particular, but... Yeah. Uh, yeah, cells, they're, they're class. Probably the best best glove brand out there, aren't yeah. they? You've worn a, you've gone through a lot of different brands as well, haven't you? Yeah. Really? Uh, what have I worn? Precision, uh, wore AB ones for a bit. Yep. Then, uh, yeah, cells. Yeah. But I think the quality on these is like, yeah, probably definitely the best I've worn. Yeah. So durable. Yeah. I think gloves I've worn in the past is like a quartz palm. It's like a speckled palm. Yeah, love I think, the technical spec. Yeah, love that. A couple of games in them, they're done. Yeah. Whereas cells, you probably rinse them for like two, three weeks and yeah. they're still good to go. Right. Uh, what size are you? Uh, 11. All right. And how? What, what do you do to, to get your gloves match ready? Uh, Everyone's slightly different. I love yeah, this sort of Yeah, so say I'm playing on a Saturday, I would maybe wheel them out Thursday. Yeah. So full training session or just a warm up with the yeah, goalies? Yeah, full training session, get them going. Obviously, it's difficult when, when it's muddy or something in the training pitch. You don't want to be putting your match gloves through that. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, probably two, one or two sessions to bed them in. Because yeah. uh, like we were speaking about before with the Puma balls, <sighs> they are a nightmare. If, if they're brand new and your gloves are brand new, it's like literally a bar of soap. See, look, the, those Puma balls, when it's wet and if you've got new gloves, it's just impossible, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. But the older your gloves with a brand new ball works. The better, yeah. But then, like we were talking before, right? So then multi-ball then comes in. Yeah. And I know for a fact that most kit men in the country will have old balls the whole way around the pitch but give the referee a new ball to yeah. kick off with. So as soon as that new ball goes off and you've got old gloves on that were perfect for that brand new ball, yeah. an old ball comes on and you're like, these are not the right gloves anymore for yeah. this ball. Yeah, multi-ball is going to be a bit of a nightmare, isn't it? Yeah. So then, like, but then do you then, like, go... I can't wait. I'll wear new, newish gloves, like better, like yeah, middle ground. Middle ground. Yeah. And then the first few catches, you're like, oh, I don't know if it's a new ball yeah. or not. It's yeah. a tricky one to it, judge. It is difficult. Really. Like uh, sometimes if you uh, the refs in the tunnel, he throws you the ball, and you're like, oh no. Yeah. Well, sometimes your away. head can go straight away. Yeah. I've changed my gloves in the tunnel before. Yeah, because it's completely different to what you've just warmed yeah. up with. Um, yeah, you warm uh, up with your training balls that are weathered. They've got their gloss has been kicked yeah, off them. Feels unreal. Yeah, fi- and you f- you're catching everything in the warm up. And like you said, like you go in a tunnel and the ref goes, yeah, "Do you want to feel that?" And you're like, oh, "Yeah, I will now." Uh, yeah. And you're like, "Yeah, I might change my gloves here." Yeah. So I've I've used glove glue quite a bit. Yep. Just spray it on the palm. It's like really sticky and tacky. Yeah. So I find that works well just for a game. Top it up at half time. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that's probably as good as you can do with. I think people use VAS as well. Yeah, I've done that in the past, but yeah, with a can new, ruin a new pair of gloves. can, so. yeah. You bought, I think, for game day, you're just literally worrying about the game, aren't you? Yeah, you'll deal with you get a new pair of gloves after. Yeah, how many pairs of gloves do you go through? Uh, probably 30 a season. Yeah, so mm. every two games, you're gonna, yeah, wear I a new think so, pair. yeah, yeah, and then they'll become your training pair. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, do you, do you look after your gloves or are you just quit pretty much just? You'll chuck them in the bag and they'll be ready uh, next week. No, I'll, I'll dry them out after training. Yeah, there's nothing worse. If you if you wear them, stick them in a bag and then pull them out, they're going to be honking. They stink. Don't yeah, they? they really stink. So um, yeah, dry them out. Maybe put them in the shower if they're muddy. Uh, yeah, good to go for the yeah. next session. Just like breaking them in, make sure they're ready. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, do you remember your first ever <coughs> pair of gloves? Uh, Everyone's got one. Yeah, pair pro- that it's probably Adidas Finger Saves. It's yeah. got to be up there. They were like, I think be, everyone mate. had a pair of them, didn't they? Yeah. Just looking at Van der Sar, you just, yeah. or Shea Given, you're yeah. like, yeah, they, they, were, were they were like the classic at the time, weren't they? You wouldn't remember Oliver Kahn either. Obviously, I know who he is, but yeah, he's been b- b- before my you time. You would have loved him. He's yeah. right up your street, is mate. It? Yeah, would have loved the gym. Would have yeah. just like, thrown people around. Uh, right, let's do some geeky stuff, right? Uh, any superstitions? Uh, no, I try not to have any. No. No. Uh, I've got routine, but superstitions. Go on, what's your routines? Go on, in terms of what? Do you like game left, day or? Yeah, match day, yeah. Um, so you like left left glove, I, right I probably glove. do, probably put my right glove on first. I think it's just habit. Yeah. You've got everyone puts a, a certain boot on first. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, superstitions, they can easily form as a player, can't yeah, they? Yeah, so quickly. I try not to, 
you know, I don't buy into them. No. I think it's so easy you, you though. See, you, yeah, you see people get go under with them. Yeah, don't you? but even like down to like pre-match stuff. If you've played well that week, I, I guarantee I still do it. I'll think back, what did I have last week? Yeah. And like you go, is that a superstition or is that just me looking for an excuse to like, I had a good game last week, I'll, yeah. I'll try and carry it on. And you just try and pick up like all these things along yeah. the way. You're like, but then again, like none of it matters. Like yeah. you could eat a burger and chips before a game as a goalie. It exactly. wouldn't actually matter. No, it wouldn't. Yeah, your performance is probably, yeah, it's not going to affect it as long as you, you're not hungry on the pitch. Yeah. You're going to be all right, aren't you? You like a bit of scrown as well, don't oh, you? I do love my food, yeah. Yeah. What, yeah. What's your pretty much food? <clears throat> uh, so I'll have Where do we stop here, by the way? Can I get a pen? <laughs> yeah. Three o'clock <laughs> kickoff. I'll go porridge in the morning and then scrambled egg on toast for, for lunch and a coffee on the way, cortado. Yeah. Yeah, nice strong. Love a small, coffee. Yeah. yeah, all goalies love coffee, yeah. mate. That's what keeps it's a us right alive. It's a passage, isn't it? Yeah, it has to be done. I'm, I'm coffee. I'm caffeine gum. Yeah. Oh, caffeine gum. I have that as well. One yeah. before, as soon as I've come in for the warm up, straight in. Yeah, and then as you go out, spit it out, spit it out. Yeah, yeah. And then I do that half time again. Yeah, no yeah, half time. Nice. Yeah, I love yeah. a caffeine addict. Why don't? Why not? <laughs> yeah. Please take caffeine uh, sensibly, please. Anyone that's watching, <laughs> <laughs> this is a disclaimer. Uh, right, as we said, I want to go through your gym sort of stuff because yeah. you've always loved the gym. Yeah. And I've never been a huge fan. Yeah, you you love throwing weights about long, eh? Uh, Makes me I've sick. I probably man. come off it slightly as I've got older. You know, when you get certain niggles yeah. at times in the season, but yeah, I still love the gym. I think I remember doing it at Sheffield United with like trap bar deadlifts. Probably I think got up to two hundred kg once on yeah. that. Uh, Squatting because we had we had some sorts. really good fitness coaches as well. Obviously really big, good, big Lee Records as well. Yeah, Lee Records, Lee, Lee McMahon, McMahon, really good. Both of them like unreal. Yeah. and there. they used to love Olympic lifting. Yeah, and you bought right into it. I did. Yeah, they were obviously coming through eighteen, nineteen. It's so important like to be strong yeah. and robust. If you're going to be playing 40, 50 games a year, you've got to be strong. Um, so yeah, I bought into it and then just carried it on. And yeah. that, obviously, as as your career goes on, you modify bits. If you've got little bit of back pain you might not heavy squat or you change change bits but yeah i still still love the gym to be fair yeah mate obviously i've said to you before but i watched you like doing some off-season program with yeah. a fitness trainer and that yeah. does like i love like endurance sports so like i'm i'm more than happy to go for a long distance run long distance cycle yeah and like you love it high intensity work don't you, you love hit yeah. work and stuff yeah like that. so yeah this off-season working his instagram ben the bounce he was pretty good ex uh olympic it's a great bob, name bob sledder it's a great name he's got some leap on him so Has i he, thought yeah. yeah he was in sheffield uh, working with me this off-season so loads of plyometrics yeah. uh Loads of work in a gym, so yeah, I loved it. Yeah, you have got an unbelievable spring, though, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, um, you've awesome. always done plyometrics, though. I think yeah. that's obviously a, a massive thing that any listeners, young kids out there, like, should be doing box jumps, should be yeah. doing a lot of plyometrics. If you want to yeah. be a young goalkeeper, now nah, it's so important. Yeah, you have. To, I think you have to be explosive. Yeah, obviously, you got to be good at working your feet quickly, but then, you know, to get that power to come claim across or get to the top corner so yeah. important so yeah it's you have to have it in your gym routine is that one of your your go-to things that you'll do regular what a, a box jump or yeah, just plyometrics in general uh, yeah i'd say so like a little bit in the pre-ab before training yeah uh, I, I have noticed a difference if you don't do any plyos before and uh, compared to when you do like you're so much more explosive when you go into goalie training yep so you're saving things where you're a bit surprised yourself because you're fired up like yep. your, your nervous system and everything as you get older, that changes, and you just warm up the bits that you've had injuries. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, look That's, after yourself. Yeah, I've like I've had a ruptured Achilles and a ruptured thigh and a bad back, so I'm like, well, I'll, I'll foam roll the life out yeah. of all of them. I'll do some Y complex on a, an Airx and stuff. Yeah. Like that. I'll just make sure that I'm looking after those older, older, yeah. older bits. You just wheel yourself out, don't yeah. you? You're getting niggles. At to be fair, like times. I've, I've only missed one training session in four years now. So really? like, as I've got older, I've learned to cope more. My yeah. body is like adapted more to what works for me yeah and I, I i swear by it i think that like as soon as you know your own body and you know your own strengths and weaknesses and yeah. you can get the most out of what you've got like i'm never physically going to be as good as you like but I, I know that how i can play football is different than how you play yeah. football and it is just about harnessing your super strengths yeah exactly you, you know what works for you don't you the older you get you know exactly what your routine yeah. needs to be if someone says you're out in the grass at 10 right yeah i need 15 minutes in the gym i'm good to go yeah uh you you also used to do a lot of video analysis with wardy yeah Are you st have you carried that through uh post game yeah probably do your clips maybe take 10 minutes five ten minutes look at 
Um, I've had it at times where a keeper coach will want to watch every involvement. Yep. That can take an hour. It's, it can be a, a little time, bit boring, yeah. yeah. So I think, yeah, if you just pick out the bits, some bits you did good, what can you work on, and then move on. Do you but, do much work before games uh, about opposition and analysis? Uh, opposition set plays we'll look at, yeah. and then obviously penalties. Yeah. Um, it's a, yeah, it's tough. Penalties is a tough one because sometimes I found I've saved the most when I've had no intel on them. You just go with your gut yeah. and you get after it and you make the save. Whereas you can you can look at a pattern all day long, but you know the penalty taker might not even know where they go until the game. So yeah, it's a I, difficult mean, I, one. I try and study penalties, and like you said, it, at the end of the day, it, it changes all the time. It's yeah. so hard. It's just you get an inkling. Yeah, uh, like as much as you can look at how they fr throw their arm up or their run up or the, yeah. like the angle of their approach. Like I, I started to over analyze it and go like, oh. Where's their fan base? Where are they going to celebrate? Where okay, are they going right. to run to? Yeah. How many players have they got on one side of the box compared to the other? Like, I would look at all these things. Yeah. And then, like, the last few, I think I've let in the last two, three penalties, and I'm like, I'll just scrap all that again and start yeah, again just, and just go, like, I'm going to dive left or right. Yeah. And, and that, see what happens. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, you may as well. Sometimes you have to, like, remove yourself from that situation because yeah. you get caught in it. Yeah. Um, uh, I wanted to talk a little bit with you about your, your England career and stuff like that because yeah. the, the year that you came back uh, before Nigel Atkins. I know you had a really successful spell with England and stuff, and you almost jumped straight into it from, was it under 17s you first uh, called? 18s was my first 18s, call. Uh, yeah. I knew it was quite late. You didn't do like the younger age groups, but you ended no. up getting in and doing really well with them. Yeah, so I was in, I think at loads of caps, I had uh, one for 18s, one for the 20s. Yeah. Uh, and I was in quite a few 21 squads. Um, but yeah, that was, you know, brilliant experience and there's, Loads of those lads have gone on to now be like full internationals and regulars in the team. Uh, and I think 21's Gareth Southgate was a manager. So that was a good experience for me. Um, but yeah, I loved it. Going to St. George's Park, traveling the world, um, you know, seeing different, you know, players from the Premier League, which I wasn't used to being in League One with Sheffield United. So uh, yeah, I loved it. Loved my time. It's quite England. a contrast in the uh, wages as well at that time. Oh, I yeah. Bet. Yeah. I bet there was some, uh, some big hitters. <laughs> yeah, especially in the 21s. I'm coming from Sheffield in League One. you got got like, fully-fledged Prem players in there. you still got your Nivea wash bag. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> my Invisalign wash bag. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. mate, it happens. But like, obviously, like it's full credit that you've, you've gone on to amass such a huge amount of games and that. And it, like, that doesn't happen by chance. Like, that's that's dedication and professionalism yeah. to a T. Like... And I know, like, even, like, speaking to you now and how he was back then, mate, like, your desire to play games is, like, unrivaled. Yeah. You still absolutely, like, you love playing, Yeah, you? I love it, yeah. When you're not playing, it's, uh, you know, you don't get the highs and the lows. You just sort of, you're somewhere yeah. in the middle, aren't you? you yeah. Just... Like, your role changes throughout a season. Yeah. Like, I, I had it, like, obviously, uh, last year, and uh, that's just what happens. I've had it over my whole career. Like, like you go from being the number one thinking I'm yeah. playing every week and then all of a sudden like flip of a coin yeah. you're like right I'm not playing or a sign in comes in but yeah. you, it still you don't lose your desire to play no. like myself I'm still desperate to play as many games in my career as I can yeah uh, I, I feel like I spent a lot of games I've, I've had I'm, I amassed 280 games on the bench really and cool. like when you look back at you and you go they could have been appearances but yeah. only one of you can play so it's yeah. not always as Plain sailing as are, no. you've got to move club because there's only 72 teams in the football league. Yeah, it's not so always that easy, is it? It's not easy. People think, oh, well, he should just move and go and get games. It don't happen like that. Yeah. Even if you feel like you're too good for the level below, they might not be able to afford your wages or yeah. the club might not want to loan you to them or it might not be the, logistically the best transfer in the world for you, for your career. Yeah. So, mate, like, to, again, to play over 300 games under 30 years old, it's incredible. Yeah. No, I've, I've loved it and, you know, I've probably got a fair few games on the bench as well, but... I think I've always had the mentality of, you know, forcing my way in wherever I've got and I've, that has happened. Uh, so, yeah, I just love playing. I think, you know, you get the, that's where you, you that's what you train for, isn't it? Yeah. You're doing all your work in the week and it's great to perform well in, on the training ground. But when you go out and make a difference on a Saturday, that's, you know, that's, what, that's why you play. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, like you're, that's the hardest thing is you want to play as big a part in the role as yeah. possible. And sometimes you, you don't get to do that, but you're yeah. like, Patience is a virtue, mate. It is, yeah. I, th I think I've always just try and look after what I can control, control yeah. work ethic, attitude, just get, try and get after it every day. Yeah. And, and 
give your best to. Right. Uh, have you got any advice for young goalkeepers? I know we talked about the gym sort of stuff. The, I think really young, just enjoy it. Just dive around. Try and stop the ball going in the goal. Don't don't worry too much about technical bits and stuff. Uh, and I think as you get older, um, you just have to try and separate yourself from the rest of the pack. Yeah. Uh, and I always had that mentality when I was younger. I used to, we had a goalie coach, Lee Kendall at Sheffield United. And me and him, when I was a scholar, we'd be out every afternoon going on the goalie area, putting crosses in, shots from the edge of the box, everything. And I think, you know, you had those hours up. And, you know, I think that's probably what propelled me towards the first team. Yep. Without that, I probably, you know, you don't know what would have happened. So, yeah, I, Matt, honestly, I, obviously, I know I said about some of your aptitude, but your mindset and your consistency, like you're, you're never too high and never too low. Like yeah. you've always come across to me. And every time I've played with you or against you, uh, even like talking to you now, you can just tell that you're, you're consistent. You're, yeah. you're emotionally so stable, which yeah. is obviously huge because you don't have that like huge negative downfall. Yeah. And you don't have that like you don't get carried away when you've done well. Yeah. You, like, it is important. I'm, that's I'm a huge not, skill. I'm no expert, by the way. Yeah. But I still, if you've had a bad game, it still yeah. does get to you. But, yeah. you know, you can't get too carried away with it because you've got to go out and do it again yeah. in a few days' time. So I think, yeah, being, you know, emotionally stable, not, like you said, not getting too high, yeah. not getting too low is so important, yeah. especially as a keeper. So you, like, You've also worked with some some really good goalkeepers along yeah. the time and you've obviously picked up some traits off them. Yeah. You're not as nice as Simon Moore, but it's like yeah. you are a nice guy. si has got the nicest guy in football <laughs> <laughs> tag, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. yeah, it's tough to beat that. Yeah. No, obviously, uh, I, I enjoyed working with you at the time and obviously you was young and that, but uh, no, it's been a pleasure and obviously... Congratulations on recently getting married. Thank you, yeah. Yeah, better me mention the missus, isn't it? Just get her yeah, in there. Yeah, so recently married, got my son Harry as well. Yeah, nice. So, yeah, life's right. good. Uh, and finally, mate, uh, what does the goalkeeper's union mean to you? I think day to day is having a great set of lads who enjoy working hard and having a laugh. Yeah. I think I think there's nothing better than when you've got a good goalie group and every day you're going out looking forward to training. I think... Uh, I think we've all been there. It's, great. it's a great feeling, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, looking forward to playing head tennis, goalie wars, whatever it is. I think it's class. Yeah. It's a special competitive group. Isn't it, it is, yeah. yeah. Everyone wants to win. Yeah. Uh, and you're trying to beat each other. Uh, so I think it's that day to day camaraderie. Yeah, ledge. All right. Well, what a great episode this has been, by the way. Yeah, Thank you very it, much, George. Thanks for having me. Thank you for coming on. Thank you. This has been the Yours Mine Away podcast with me, Mark Howard. Make sure you go and give us a, a follow and a like. Uh, give us a five star rating. It really helps the channel grow. Thanks a lot, George Long. Thank you.